Hi everyone, welcome into the Rochester Press Box. Are you ready for some football, right? NFL season starts this week. Fall, I feel <laughs> fall, which means it's the last of the polo shirts. I gotta go back professional just like Bill. Okay, well, that so that's setting the bar. Hi, <laughs> it's the start of the NFL season. I gotta look presentable. Well, here. I mean, you guys could just start rocking jerseys. It's very comfortable. No, okay, we'll do that. Who are you wearing? Uh, Sixteen. I thought we were all wearing our game worn throwback Matt Castle jerseys this afternoon. No, no there's a game worn Matt Castle jersey. <laughs> You're looking at it. This might be the only one in this color. So you cannot talk about anybody's attire. Sixteen. From now on. Would you have known sixteen? Absolutely not. All right. No, I, 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 I would have thought Duffy would have been on the back of that. Started the first game ever in Rex Ryan's Buffalo Bills career, and he played one play. There's your oh, fun fact right. of the day. That's right. He Is got it credit fun, for the really? start. <laughs> yeah, I it was. Fun. It I was fun telling you. <laughs> because who was the guy that wound up the... Tyrod most, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Was sort of victimized by not getting credit yeah. for the start. He started 15 games that season and, and missed then one they, play. And then they keep these stupid one-loss records for the quarterback. It actually goes to Castle. You right? got so it. He, he got the win. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Hey, this may be the most we talk about the Detroit Lions all year, but aren't they like sort of America's team this week? Uh, I know their coach is <laughs> America's coach of the year every single year because he's so passionate in Campbell. I Listen, I root for the Lions, but Let's be honest. I mean, this is the, the Super Bowl winning champions. It's Kansas City. We kind of want to see if they can run it back again. Uh, they'll be without their top wide receiver. At least he won't be 100%. It's just interesting to see. Everyone loves to root for the Lions, but then we know full well they're that team that just doesn't have enough offensively and defensively to make it. But it's the start of the season, so everybody's in yeah. it. Six and a half point dogs. I thought it was interesting that they scheduled this game. It was a bit of a reach. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> But then you think about it, and logically, everyone's going to watch no matter who you slot into that game, so why waste a good match? I mean, I guess I get that logic. I am furious that you're doing this. This game is not even the best game of the week. You can argue that the it's Browns by design. Bengals, I mean, I don't understand it at all. Look, you're right, but it makes me feel as a football fan like a sucker because I'm going to watch <laughs> the game, but I'm going to watch it begrudgingly. And here's the thing about Detroit. You're right. Everybody's cheering for Detroit. Detroit is not going to be what everyone thinks Detroit is going to be. That NFC North is wide open. The Bears could take a step this year. We don't know what the Packers are going to be like with Jordan Love, and the Vikings are a formidable team in that division. You could have a team facing off opening night against the Kansas City Chiefs that finished third or fourth in their own division. I think the NFL is coming in here smart with a sort of a soft opening because you know everyone's going to watch that game on Thursday night. You know everyone's going to yeah. be bored of that game. But it's on funny, it's such night. a change of philosophy because they always served up a great opening game. I, I just, I mean, I think they're looking at it from the standpoint it's the first game of the year of the first week of the NFL. Everyone's watching it. Everyone's betting it. Why would we put a big rivalry team out there? You're absolutely right. Bills Jets is more interesting to me than any other game this week. Um, and I'm a Giants fan. I don't even want to see the Giants Cowboys. I want to see Bills Jets. But that's what's strange to me, right? Like, you're obviously not going to put Bills Jets on opening night because you got to have the Super Bowl champion there. But everyone's going to watch Monday Night Football as well. So why did you burn that game in a prime time spot opening weekend? It did, I don't Well, you had to do it. With, you had to serve up Kansas City somehow. You did. You got to look at their schedule. But their schedule is just as formidable as the Bills' schedule this year. You have Buffalo on that schedule. Okay, you don't want to do them back-to-back. You got Cincinnati, a, re, uh, a replay of the AFC Championship from last year. How, how, of all the teams, do you end up with Denver? You could have made an argument for Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, a team that... Could have made it to the Detroit Super Bowl. wasn't in the playoffs. Right. It's, obvi it's obviously a, a change of philosophy. No matter what they're going to win, we know that. Everyone's going to watch the game Thursday. So what? Six and a half. So let's, you know, let's let's warm up because we're going to have a competition this year. Yeah. Let's warm up and pick it. Kansas Six City. and a half is Kansas the line. Kansas City by 14. Yeah, I'm with him on that, man. I don't think Detroit comes anywhere near. And you can tell by the commercials that they're running. Have you seen the TV commercials? Kansas City, Travis Kelsey, Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, and the Lions. Oh, come on, Sunday night football. He sounds night. just like him, though. Yeah, he really I'm does. Really so good. what are they saying about the Lions? No, uh, nothing. They're just nothing. saying, like, and the Lions. Like, it's like all of them. <laughs> Kansas City, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, also the Lions. Oh, Sunday night football. When your busy selling point is your head coach, you're not really selling too much, really. Yeah, that's kind of tough. This is the Rochester Press Box. We're talking Buffalo Bills next. Just passing through. J Mac, Soccer Sam Fantuzo, Loretta Scott, Joe Beard, 29 in all, Life Lessons from Notable Rochesterians. Available now. I have some travel books, Volume 1, Volume 2. You'll be able to get one of these books for free when you buy the new Volume 2. 
for only $14.95. Contact me at MikeTheGetawayGuy at gmail.com. Our Buffalo Bills segment brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys and proud sponsor of Buffalo Bills Training Camp. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here in the Rochester Press Box, our Buffalo Bills segment brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Uh, so let's... Uh, Dive into the bills. You got a roster, at least, you know, b before they tinker with it, you've got a roster. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're deep in positions. We are. The bills are deep in positions. <laughs> you can do that. Need to be deep it in. only took him how many years to go, to, <laughs> to go from the bills and we? Well, he's got he's got a jersey. True, he's yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. This jersey he, was on the field. I don't he know he is Matt Castle. <laughs> <laughs> it might be Matt Castle. Um, I'm the, you're, you're deep in the defensive line, which is going to be important, and you're getting Von Miller back, hopefully in the fifth game of the season this year. You are unbelievably deep at corner. The whole situation with Kyrie Elam, Elam, last year's first-round pick, not being able to win that starting job, a lot of people are looking at that as a negative. I see it as a positive. You have a first-round pick that's being held out of that spot by a seventh-round pick a couple of years ago and a sixth-round pick from last season. And here's the thing. They both performed really, really well in starting spots last year. You have the deepest safety group in the league. The question mark is going to be that middle linebacker spot. However, opposite that linebacker, Matt Milano is arguably the best in his position in the league. I mean, the Bills have a lot going for them. The spotlight is not bright upon them anymore. Aaron Rodgers and his big mouth took that off of him, no problem. Like, I am more confident this year walking into the season than I was last year. I'm happy for the Bills, and I'm also happy for Bookie Basham. I really appreciate that as a Giants fan, that he's going to be wearing Giants blue instead of Bills blue. But I will look at it from this standpoint. We knew DeMar Hamlin was going to make this team. Mm. You said that how many how many months ago when it was two people we knew they were going to make the roster, Josh Allen and DeMar Hamlin? I don't think DeMar Hamlin was the lock that everyone thinks he is. Because, well, you had him on the pup list. Well, so that's just it. If you look at what the Bills did in the offseason, the reason the Bills have one of the deepest safety groups in the NFL is because they went out and signed a whole bunch of safeties and legitimate safeties. I mean, the Bills cut Dean Marlowe, a guy who's been in the league, what, six, seven, eight years now, not only playing safety, but a special teams guy, someone that Sean McDermott loves. I watched every second of Bills preseason football. I was worried to see what DeMar Hanlon was going to look like because you understand why mentally and physically what he has been through would be taxing on him. You would understand why a guy like that wouldn't be able to bounce right back. He played a phenomenal preseason. He's the guy he was last year, a guy who had 91 tackles for the Buffalo Bills in a reserve and then four starting role. He earned his spot, and I don't think that it would have been out of the question that the Bills would have found a way to say, listen, you're not going to be on this team. There's a spot for you in this franchise if you want there to be. If you want to keep playing football, we're going to let you go. That spot he has, he earned on the field. That's I, awesome. I do have a question, though. Are you confident about the backup quarterback situation you have right now? Uh, as we tape this, no. I mean, uh, Kyle Allen did not look good in the preseason. <laughs> and I'm going to assume that there will be a move after everyone clears waivers where the Bills are going to put somebody else well, there. Well, teams obviously think that. I mean, the Patriots left themselves with one quarterback. I, they that, don't even have a backup. I don't even... Uh, that doesn't make any sense. I'm kind of hoping the Bills claim him just to mess with Belichick. That's how much Is I Belichick trying to get fired? I, I, I don't understand. This. <laughs> I, I, don't really, I didn't understand that roster move. Now, since then, since we're taping it, I'm sure they've made some rules and, and, and done kind of like, what are you talking about? Belichick yeah, but on cutdown day, they, they, they cut Bailey Zappi. He's one of the high-profile guys that got released, and they have no other quarterback on the roster. Too. Except yeah, like, I was like, well, okay, all right, well, then who's uh, are you not throwing the ball? Is no, I think Matt Patricia is their backup quarterback this year. <laughs> Matt Belichick's going to go with it. It's a really unconventional idea, but it's a good idea. Our Buffalo Bills segment brought to you by Connors and Ferris. Like it or not, is next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road. Hey, hello again, Mike O'Brien, your getaway guy. Are you ready for one of the most amazing getaways here at Niagara Falls, USA? Come along for the ride. It's Cave of the Winds. Look for the getaway guy on Facebook. Here's a Press Box trivia answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here. This is the Rochester Press Box, and our Like It or Not segment is brought to you by Sport Clips, where the MVP experience is better than ever. 
Sport Clips. It's a game changer. No appointments are needed. Stop by a Rochester location today. Tariq, like it or not, you know, when DeMar Hamlin went down, we're talking about DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. When he went down last year, it's like the first time that, like, an NFL game had been stopped yeah. due to... And we saw it happen twice in the preseason. Is this something we're going to keep seeing? I, I It concerns me because we did see it a lot, and we saw games basically canceled. And I get it, it's preseason. It is what it is. It doesn't affect. But now we're going to week one of the NFL season. And um, hopefully there is a game plan after Hamlin, not only for the care of the player, but what's going to happen with the team. We're talking teams trying to make sure that they win their division, get into the playoffs. Or we're talking people gambling on games. We're talking about fantasy football. We're talking about a lot of different things. I'm very concerned about not only the safety of the players, but what the league plans on doing if they have to reschedule games, bye weeks, this goes right back to the NFL, having two bye weeks to sort of save themselves from situations in which they cannot continue a game because a player does not get up. I would go in, I'm going to go ahead and assume with the NFL being the billion dollar operation that it is, multi-billion dollar operation, that they have now come up with some kind of contingency plan within them in case what happened with DeMar Hamlin happens again. I will say this. I believe there were eight players carted off the field in the preseason. Two of those games get canceled on the back end. I'm going to guess that what we're seeing there is an overabundance of safety because of what everyone witnessed on national television with DeMar Hamlin last season. Now, I don't know that for sure. I'm obviously not a doctor. I'm wearing a game-worn Matt Castle jersey on television right now. <laughs> but, I mean, you think about the things that we saw last year that were almost like Passe, like for let's talk about the Bills Jets game. Mike White had broken ribs. They knew it. He was allowed back in the game. He was cracked in half by Matt Milano. He was taking shots and screaming. You could hear him on the microphone from the field, and he was getting compliments about what a warrior he was. That's not going to happen again. Yeah, after the whole tour thing. Exactly. Yes, that on top of that. I mean, look, there were some very scary moments, <laughs> most of them involving the Bills last season. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's clearly a change of consciousness, I think, on the half of, of football fans and the entire industry, because I'll take it all the way back to Daryl Stingley, as a Patriots receiver got paralyzed. Uh, they wheeled him off the field and just, and it was a preseason game, and they just picked up the game and continued to play. Which, which offers me a solution to the problem. I like to bring those up every once in a while. Why not start to go to more of these sort of practices, joint practices and games, film them, maybe make it open for fans. Preseason games, you know for well, half the time. He, ask him if he went to a preseason game. Did you go to a preseason well, game? I only gave my tickets up to my buddy so his kid could be sitting there. There you go. Look at that. He didn't go. Proves <laughs> <laughs> my point. I hope you feel bad. I, I don't feel bad because he, he just found a way point. to spin it. No, no, no. It proves my point about who really goes to preseason games and giving access to people who don't have those preseason, uh, don't have the regular season I was watching uh, that. Pa- I was watching that Patriots game and I, said, and, and I knew. I said, they're going to stop this. Yeah. It says it's just... Your consciousness is different. Like it or not, uh, the availability of Trey Lance, all of us, you know, Sudden, kind of. I don't understand what the 49ers are doing in that. I don't know what they did. I, if it's interesting, the Bills uh, admitted they tried to trade for him, a six that would have become a fifth. It's the worst draft pick and deal in NFL history. And here's the thing it could look even worse because if Trey Lance becomes even a formidable starter in the NFL, you've scored. Screwed up three different ways. And how are the 49ers putting their entire franchise on the shoulders of a man who was the last overall pick last season? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Coming off of UCL, by the way, which could have had Tommy John surgery implications. A trade like that ought to ruin the team. How it ought you, to be a franchise destroyer. How do you not even bring up the Dallas Cowboys? The Dallas Cowboys have quarterback question marks going into the season. And oh, by the way, I'd like to make sure that I pay my quarterback, give him the confidence he needs, has a terrible preseason, and then bring in Trey Lance at the last second without anybody knowing it. The Cowboys, I have no idea why you would do that. I get that. A fourth round pick for a guy that was a top five? Yeah. I mean, that seems like a no-brainer. Are I, you I, kidding I me? Gauge the, the Bills had a public interest in making a deal. Oh, Kyle Allen being toast. That's how I gauge it. I, and I but think, Lance isn't ready to play. He's not the kind of guy you want to replace Kyle Allen with, I wouldn't think. So here's what I'm thinking. Kyle Allen, or excuse me, Trey Lance was compared to Josh Allen body type, the way he plays, the way he throws. Josh Allen was a guy, remember, the Bills had to beat math to make him a successful quarterback. I think that there's system, their coaching staff that they used to build Josh Allen, they believe they could have done the same thing for Trey Lance and potentially get something on the back end out of him. You wouldn't have done that if you're Dallas? Absolutely not. Not with my quarterback getting picked off in the preseason during practice and the confidence of the But I don't think he's a threat to play this year. I think that's a a push it off. But why would you create a problem when you got the quarterback you seem to just pay for and now you're making a roster move for his position. His coach doesn't know. The general manager doesn't know. Oh, wait, that's right. The owner is the general manager of the team. Question, how did Dak Prescott get his starting job again? Mm. Can you imagine if Bean did that to McDermott? That's not the way 
things work. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I know the way that things work anymore in the NFL. Like, like, no, I'm serious. Because he's like, um, because he knows it wouldn't happen. Well, That's the whole no, point. It wouldn't. But then again, I also wouldn't think that two years after a guy is traded top five, when you give up three first round picks and a third, that you'd be willing to take a fourth round pick to send him in your own conference. It cut, doesn't make any cut sense. Cut your losses. So they only get the explanation. Only my point. Our Like It or Not segment brought to you by Sport Clips <laughs> Unfinished Business is next. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. And now to Eichel. He floated one. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. It's time for Unfinished Business. Pat, start us off. We found out this week, speaking of the 49ers, that had the 49ers somehow managed to beat the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC Championship game, having lost their starting quarterback, backup quarterback, backups backup, and backup backup due to injury, Kyle Shanahan would have signed Phillip Rivers for a single game to play in a Super Bowl as the starting quarterback for the 49ers. Now, by the way, I'm not making this up. This came from Kyle Shanahan himself. They had already discussed if worst case scenario, which did happen, happened, and they somehow managed to win the game. Could you imagine what an unbelievably amazing Super Bowl that would have been? First of all, you would have had a quarterback that didn't make it to the Super Bowl starting a Super Bowl, a guy who played really well, arguably a Hall of Fame career in Phillip Rivers that never had the team around him to get him over the hump, right? He would have had an opportunity to change the whole narrative of his career with one performance having not played all season long. And even better, it would have been against one of the teams that tormented him in his division as the quarterback of the Chargers his entire career and dethrone a guy who took his rightful spot as the best quarterback in that division. Look, man, you know how much I love chaos. And there is no more chaos than a man who doesn't curse and hasn't played all season showing up with teammates that don't know him to practice for a week and a half for the biggest game of his career. Darn it, Kyle Shanahan. Why couldn't you have won that game? With the start of high school football basically within the last couple of weeks across the country, I couldn't help but find a documentary on Bishop Sycamore. Remember that team that was really not a school, really not a football team, but yet ended up on ESPN taking on a real IMG Academy football team and getting blown out? There's a brand new documentary. It's called BS High. I recommend it because really there's not that much football to watch, but I actually think that we should implement the Bishop Sycamore rule, where basically a school has to be a school in order for <laughs> high school kids to actually be on it, not play junior college football, and go play other high schools in that area. Basically, the school was not even put together before the football team was put together. I'll get into all the other sort of details and leave that for the documentary for you to watch. But what scares me is the fact that somebody was able to manipulate a program that really didn't exist and able to play a schedule that should not have happened with coaches that weren't there, nor trainers there to help if kids got injured. Yet there were kids perfectly ready to play, thinking that they were gonna go D1 and convinced by a coach or multiple people that they would be able to do it. The Bishop Sycamore rule should be an entire rule across high school football. Have a school, have trainers, have coaches, have some sort of certification. Because Ohio didn't do that, they got embarrassed. And so did ESPN, Bishop Sycamore. BS high. I recommend it if you don't have any football to watch this weekend. Notre Dame opened up the college football season with a 42-3 win over Navy. On the surface, that's just another one of those games that the good teams scheduled to log a few easy wins. But there is more to this than that. The Notre Dame versus Navy series has been played 96 times in the last 97 years. The only miss was the COVID season. It hasn't been particularly competitive. The Irish own an 81-13 and one edge with wins in 55 of the last 59. Still, it's a rivalry unlike any other. You see, Notre Dame might actually owe its existence to the Naval Academy. As back in 1943, Americans were headed to war. Notre Dame as a private university and an all-male institution to boot lost much of its population to the war effort. The school shrank down to just over 2,600 students and was falling fast. 
That's when the Navy stepped in. Owned in part to the longstanding relationship that the schools had forged on the football field, Notre Dame was chosen as a training site for naval recruits headed to the war. It was no small deal. Notre Dame was paid almost $500,000 for upgrades and the full use of their facilities. As a way of showing its appreciation, Notre Dame guaranteed Navy a place on their football schedule for as long as Navy wanted it. Contrast that with the chaos that the sport finds itself in these days and the Notre Dame versus Navy football rivalry endures on a handshake. It isn't Michigan against Ohio State or Auburn, Alabama. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't want to be. And that is our unfinished business. I love the sycamore rule. A school's got to be a school. I mean, get yes, behind that. You have to be. <laughs> I just don't understand how this happened. And it should never happen again, the sycamore rule. And it's good to have a, you know, a documentary reviewer on staff here. That's very I handy. Always, I love documentaries with comment in it. Well, I guess he's not a comment, but maybe he is. <laughs> oh, I thought you said comment. Like, uh, never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I love comments. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you again next week with the Rochester Press Box. He's not in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great if he was. Voice, I love comedy. Yeah, let's do this thing. <laughs>